This example is going to take us through a parallel opposed whole brain treatment. Uh, just open fields, we're not going to have any sort of segmenting or forward planning and, um, or field-in-field -field modifications to reduce hot spots. This is just going to be right-left uh, lateral uh, fields. So in Eclipse here, I have set up SAD Brain 1. That's what the name of this podcast is going to be. I have fields 1 and 2 set up uh, mid-brain, mid-plane uh, on a rando phantom. I have the brain contoured on this phantom, and rando doesn't have any eyeballs, so I've kind of made some some makeshift eyeballs in here as well, and I've set them a little off-center, so you can see that in the DRR. So on my axial view in the upper left, I've got my coronal view right below that, my sagittal um, in the lower right, and then in the upper right, I have uh, both beam's eye view, and I can also display dose volume histograms uh, for this patient as well. I have the dose calculated already, and effectively what I want to do is go through the um, you know, details of the setup, the block, and then take you through the monitor unit calculation. We have isocenter midbrain, midplane. I have two fields. Um, field 1 is at gantry angle at 270. Field 2 is gantry angle of 90. Um, they're parallel opposed pair. The blocks look like this. You can see that I've got the MLC kind of coming outside of this. It's a little sloppy on my part. I apologize for that, but that's not going to make too much of a difference here. The left lateral field, you can see that we're skimming the back of the eyeballs and blocking out the anterior oral cavity. I tried to come down to the bottom of C1, and then I've given a 2 centimeter margin um, for flash. This is a little shy up here um, around the um, brain and the head. Now I created a directly parallel opposed pair. A lot of times we will slightly oblique these angles to the anterior to match beam diversions across the back of the eye. You can see that in the axial view here, um, my right lat is diverging into the eye, um, and then the same thing on the left lat as I'm diverging um, into the other eye. So sometimes we will um, rotate the gantry just a few degrees to minimize that divergence, and then you get a clean match line along the back. Um, the back of the eyeballs, and the posterior edge of the eye usually gets right around prescription dose. So I've calculated the dose. I have 162 monitor units from each field. That makes sense. They're parallel opposed pair. They're mirrors of each other. Um, the isocenter is uh, mid-depth. So if I look at um, my depth, my water equivalent depth for each field here, uh, field 1 is 7.3 centimeters, field 2 is 7.6 centimeters, so they're within a few millimeters of each other. And you can see that on the SSDs as well. I've got 92.5 and 92.8. That's okay. Um, I've calculated a homogeneous plan. If I turn the isotopes lines on, we get a classic parallel opposed um, dose profile across the lateral portion of the head. See I've got percent depth dose coming from field 1 in red, from the opposite side on the left, field 2 percent depth dose, and then to complement each other, we get this slightly hourglassed shape, not as pronounced as in maybe, you know, the abdomen um, or the pelvis or chest, since we don't have a thickness, our, our thickness across is about 15 centimeters. But nonetheless, we still get this, this classic parallel opposed um, dose distribution. I get hot spots, anterior, posterior, it gets a little hot. You can see 105% of the dose in small 110s. Um, this is because of uh, oblique beam obliquity, um, and I have a decreased thickness. So at, at mid-plane, mid I'm 15 centimeters uh, across, and the anterior surface, I'm thinner. I'm only you know, 9 centimeters. So I'm pumping 162 monitor units in to deliver 300 centigrade times 10 fractions, and because I'm delivering 160 monitor units, um, I'm delivering a higher dose on the thinner portions of the head. So that's why we're getting these hot spots um, ant and post and then also superiorly as the cranium kind of shrinks down to the crown of the head. Uh, a lot of facilities will, will segment these out. They'll have a forward plan or a segmented plan with control points um, that, that tries to minimize these hot spots, and that way um, you know, patients can have some sort of hair sparing um, midline. Um, but some places don't. They just, they just calc these, and then they, they treat the patients. 
Now, in an actual clinical example, you know, this is a phantom. Um, so in a clinical example, on a real patient, um, the dose distribution might be slightly different. But I think this gives a pretty good approximation. So I would like to go through the entire monitor unit calculation from start to finish. I have a beam data table pulled up um, that was included in D2L, so you can download that to follow along. Um, and then I've got a calculator and uh, Microsoft Paint, um, and we can go through the, the dose calculation for this. So I'm delivering, my prescription's 300 centigrade. Okay, so I'm delivering 300 centigrade. I'm normalized to the isocenter at 100%. So monitor units are going to be dose divided by, uh, I have S sub C, my collimator scatter factor, S sub P, my phantom scatter factor. I'm going to do my depth component. In this case, I'm SAD technique. So I'm going to be using a TMR, tissue maximum ratio. I have my isodose line that I'm prescribed to, which is 100%. And then I have an inverse square factor for an SAD setup. I don't have a wedge and I don't have a tray, so I'm not going to include any of the wedge factor or the tray factor. Um, I could have an off-axis factor or an off-axis ratio. In this case, I don't since I'm calculated to the isocenter, so that's going to be unity. So once we fill this out, I'm going to say MU um, from the right lat field. I have 300 centigrade that I'm delivering, and I have a 50-50 beam weighting. If I look at my beam weighting here, I'm 50% from each field, so each field is delivering 50% of the prescription dose, which is 300 divided by 2. So 300 centigrade times 0 0.5, which is going to be 150 centigrade. Now S sub C is going to be defined by the collimator jaws for a varying machine that has a tertiary MLC. Um, my X jaw is 24 and a half, and my Y jaw is uh, 19. So my equivalent square is going to be 24.5 times 19 times 2, length times width times 2, divided by length plus width, Okay, 24.5 plus 19. So my equivalent square field size for the collimator is going to be 21. So for the sake of brevity in this example, we're just going to say 20 centimeters. So if I pull down my beam data tables and I look at S sub C for a 20 centimeter field size, 1.026. Normally you'd interpolate these values, um, but again I don't want to take time to do that right now. You can you can certainly pause the video and then figure it out on your own and then um, compare your answer to what my answer is as well as the treatment planning system. SAP. SAP is a little trickier. Um, in Pinnacle, um, the treatment planning system Pinnacle, they give you what the blocked equivalent square is. Uh, they don't give that uh, here, so we have to figure that out manually. So what basically you're trying to figure out is what what's the section of this field size that's providing scatter to my calculation point. That's what the SAP is going to be telling us. So we're going to use the block, what's called the blocked equivalent square for both the phantom scatter factor as well as the tissue maximum ratio lookup. Now for whole brains, it's, it's relatively standard. Um, I've seen 14 centimeters used as kind of a standard. Most human adults have a similarly shaped head. Some might be slightly larger, some might be slightly smaller, but on average, most people are 20 centimeters ant to post and 15 centimeters left to right. And that leads to a very uniform size um, or shaped head in our beam's eye view. And what most people use is 14 centimeters. Again, for the sake of la you know not taking time to interpolate in this example, I'm going to use 15 centimeters. So normally what you're going to do is you're going to try and figure out how much of this field size is being blocked by the patient's head or that's going to provide scatter. So if I pull my beam data table down here and I look at S sub P, S sub P at 15 centimeters is 1.014. Next is going to be my depth component, TMR, tissue maximum ratio. So I can get this in the treatment planning system two ways. Number one, I can, I can say what's my water equivalent depth, WED, for a specific field. In this case, it's 7.5. For field two, um, it's going to be 6.8. 
So my water equivalent depth I can also look up in my report. Okay, so my physical depth in the patient is 7.5. My equivalent path length is 7.5. Again, I'm not going to use this, the equivalent path length, because I'm calculated homogeneous. So 7.5 and 7.2. So let's go 7.5 for field 1. So if I pull my data table down, make sure you're on 6x, make sure you're on the TMR, not the percent depth, though, so that's listed at the top. 6MB tissue maximum ratio. So if I go down to 7 and 8 and I come over to 15, I see that for a 15 centimeter field size, again, I'm not using what the X and Y jaws are. I'm using what is my blocked equivalent square. It's going to be 0.878 and 0.848 and I'm exactly halfway in between that. So if you weren't halfway in between that, you would have to provide a linear interpolation. So 0 0.878, 0 0.848, divided by 2, 863. My isodose line is 100%. I've normalized to the 100% isodose line. Let me pull these out of the way. If we go back to my dose prescription, you can see here my prescribed percentage is 100%. If it was 95%, my isodose line percentage would be 0.95. Inverse square factor. Inverse square factor is source to calibration distance divided by source to point distance, or source to calculation point distance squared. My calculation point, or my normalization point, is at the isocenter. So for how my machine is calibrated in this example, it's a standard 1.03. How that's calculated is my machine's calibrated at 101.5, so 100 centimeter SSD at D max. And then I can say 100 centimeters is my source to calculation distance, and that's going to be squared. That gives me a standard ratio of 1.03. I don't have an off axis factor because I'm calculated to the isocenter. Okay, so 300 divided by 2 is going to be 150. 150 divided by 1 1.026, 1 1.014, 0.863, 1.03 is what you get when you take 101.5 divided by 100 squared. And I get 162.2, and we'll just round up to the nearest monitor unit. So 162 and the treatment planning system gave me 162. So we hit it right on the head. 0% error on the monitor unit calc. In this case, I'm symmetric, so my depths are nearly equivalent. So that's why I get the same monitor unit for the other side. But I would encourage you to work through uh, the monitor units for the left lateral as well. It should be very, very similar, um, if not exactly the same, you know, as the right lateral. I think the only thing that might be slightly different is the depth component, since we're not exactly midline. That is a SAD technique for whole brain treatment. There are standard monitor units. Again, it depends on how your machine is calibrated. Um, if I were to change the dose to 250, everything in this um, equation stays the same except my dose to the prescription point changes from 150 centigrade to 125. So my new monitor units are just a ratio. I could take 250 divided by 300 times 162 and I get 135. So this is a typical thing that happens where you have a whole brain patient that comes in on the weekend and the physician maybe wants to deliver 400 centigrade in one fraction um, or two fractions and then they come on Monday and the doctor wants to change from 400 centigrade to 250. So all you would do is you would take 250 divided by 400 times your original monitor units. And then that's how you would do um, a quick monitor unit um, renormalization. You don't have to go through the entire calculation that way. So again, SAD brain number one.